Hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our live stream. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I got on because we haven't been together here on YouTube in a while. I got some new streaming software, so hopefully it won't be as glitchy as it was last time. Um, and I would love to answer questions. Of course, I have a lot of um, information to be able to share with you, but as you join, please put your comments and questions into the comment box and I will answer them as we keep going here. So um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so what I wanted to share with you today is I have been uh, semi holed up and working on a new program, trying to take all of the coaching techniques and strategies and tools that I use with all of the wonderful people that I have been coaching and putting it into, into one toolbox that can be accessed online. And I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of that. And then of course, as you know, I like to give people strategies that you can use right now in the here and the now. So let me just kind of frame my approach for you because I know some people are new to the channel and uh, thank you. I see people putting some questions in. I, I will just give a brief introduction and then I'm gonna hit those questions. So please keep putting them in and I will answer them. So, my approach is different in that I have uh, degrees in many different areas and many certifications. And not that it matters in terms of achievement, but what does matter is the information that I have learned and have thankfully been able to integrate into a knowledge base from varying different angles. So I'm trained in a traditional approach to sex addiction recovery, focusing primarily on pornography. And that's more of a traditional approach, but thankfully then I have this really strong cognitive neuroscience background. And what that means is I can also approach uh, a strong pornography habit uh, or a compulsive pornography habit, which we can use the word addiction, but I know it's loaded. Um, but, you know, for some people, it really is full blown addiction. You can't stop watching. And if you do, you get into a significant problem with, you know, a lot of withdrawals. So being able to approach it from a brain standpoint, and we now know that it's a brain problem, it's a brain disorder, or the way I think of it is it's brain dysregulation. And you hear me in my videos, if you watch, what happens is your brain starts using too much fast energy and too much slow energy. And then, you know, then it's out here in the extremes. And the goal is to bump up perfect processing speed in the middle so that you don't need to keep going back to the screen or back to masturbation, which I'm sure there's some masturbation question because I know a lot of people are really um, wanting to know and I'm going to make more videos on that, but wanting to know in terms of a masturbation habit, can it stay? Does it have to go? What are we dealing with? And I'll talk about that. But it's coming from your brain. It's not even coming from your body. They feel like urges from your body, but it is a dopamine uh, the way I think about it is drip, hit, or flood in your brain that your brain wants it. So my approach is very, I'm educated and I know what I'm doing from a traditional standpoint, but then I approach it from a brain standpoint too. And just to share with you, the cognitive piece is thinking. So I think of it as how your brain is functioning and how that plays out in the behaviors of your mind and your body. So that is what we're dealing with here. And that's what this channel is dedicated to. It's dedicated to helping you get your brain working the very best that it can so that you can make a new choice and you can reboot your routines and your habits. And it becomes so much easier to leave a negative habit behind and to establish some new habits in your life that help you reach your full potential. Okay, I'm gonna tell you more about that in a minute, but let me check out some of the questions. Okay, hey everybody. Uh, hi, Kevin, I hope you, hopefully you're still here with me. So why people have confidence and energy when they masturbate still they feel like normal? Okay, this is a good question. So what happens, sorry, let me get my chair organized here. 
So what happens is, so you might be wondering, okay, you tell me about all of these things that can happen to me if I watch too much pornography or if I masturbate consistently, but you know what? I feel great. And you know what? Actually my ba my brain feels good. And I, if I had a dollar for every person that told me that they think that their habit is helping them think, I'd be a very rich woman. I'd be on some beach right now. No, I'm only kidding. I'd still be here because this is my purpose, but you get my point. So what happens is it does make your brain feel great in the moment. It's giving you this massive dopamine, you know, rush or flood. It's giving your brain exactly what it wants. But unfortunately, then if you stop giving your brain exactly what it wants, you can really crash. So that's a high high that you get from the neurochemical uh, neurotransmitter cocktail, as I like to call it, the Kool-Aid. And someone uh, commented or asked me like, why do you keep calling it the Kool-Aid? What is Kool-Aid? And in the United States, especially when I was a kid uh, a while back, if you remember the, the Kool-Aid man and Kool-Aid itself is like dyed red and it's all sugar and it tastes great when you're drinking it. And, you know, about an hour later, you completely crash or you're a maniac because we know that red dye is terrible for your nervous system and too much sugar is awful for you. It's the same thing when you masturbate or when you're watching pornography. So let me just qualify this for one second. When you watch pornography, your brain is getting a super normal amount of dopamine, tons, tons and tons of dopamine. When you masturbate and you might be thinking and in your fantasy world, your brain is likely for most people getting a little less dopamine, albeit still too much, albeit still much more than you could get from having actual sex with an actual human being partner. So that is what we don't want for you because if you keep giving your brain this massive dopamine release, what happens is then you won't be able to feel good in the world. That's the low, low. So for many people, you will be trucking along in your life and it will be serving you to feel good until it doesn't. And people hit a threshold or a tipping point. And it's scientifically, it's because of habituation and desensitization. So if you remember me talking about that in my videos, what that is, is your brain has to get more and more stimulation to be able to feel as good as it did a week or a month or a year ago, because the neurochemicals are habituating, they're leveling off, your brain's getting used to it, and now it needs more. Just like in alcoholism, an alcoholic, you know, first can have two drinks and feel great, feel the buzz, but then if they keep having two drinks, they need three drinks. Then if they keep drinking three drinks, before you know it, they need four drinks. Then they need to switch from beer to uh, wine, to whiskey, to scotch neat. And that's the increasing in intensity that in pornography, you might go from softcore to hardcore to, you know, genres that are much more intense. The same thing happens in the brain. So then you hit a threshold where your brain's habituated and it needs more. And when you give it more and more and more, and then if you stop and you try to go to your sister's birthday party where your brain's getting very little to no dopamine, that can be a deal breaker. It's a low, low. And the same thing can happen for masturbation. But usually it is with lower levels across uh, you know, your lifetime if you're not watching consistent, frequent, long sessions and intense pornography. Uh, okay, so let me, hopefully that answers your question. And if not, put it, put something else back into the comments and I'll come back to it. Um, how do I start NoFap and how should I abstain from it? Uh, Nafi, thank you for the question and I'm glad to answer it. And people have commented asking me to post videos that very specifically talk about the NoFap community and how you get started. There's a NoFap Reddit, which is, um, is contributed to and enjoyed by a lot of people, that would be a great place to start because we know in any journey when we're trying to recover our authentic self, that's what recovery is. And I know recovery is a loaded term too, uh, just like addiction, but I think of recovery, I think the whole world should be in recovery because we all have junk from our past, am I right? That we should be trying to recover that authentic self of ours before other people try to change us and taint us with their uh, feedback, if we're going to call it that. But, you know, that's what recovery is. So 
get involved in a community because community can be really, really important. And that's what I'm trying to build here um, in my own sense. I'm, and I think we're being successful. So I thank all of you because it is so exciting for me to come back onto my channel and see comments and see people uh, going back and forth between each other, really being there for each other. So I think this channel is a great place to start a no, the NoFap Reddit. And I'm going to make a video, but there's different modes. And someone asked me, like, can you comment on NoFap, easy mode, regular and hard mode, hardcore mode? The different modes basically is your approach of if you're going to go full blown abstinence of, you know, all unhealthy sexual behaviors or, or actually in hardcore mode, it's basically all sexual behaviors because you might not have the discernment of what is healthy and what is not healthy. So that can be important for some people if they don't know what they're doing is good or bad for them. And until you learn what's good or bad for you, you just stay away from it. In regular mode, you stay away from pornography um, and masturbation, but then in easy mode, you stay away from pornography, but not necessarily masturbation. And just the one liner on how I feel about that is that for many people, masturbation has to go too because, sorry, I'm getting hot. So I have to put a uh, switch from heat to air. You know how that goes for many people. They masturbation is part of the porn pornography habit. And you really should abstain from that for a while, because if you keep engaging in it, it will make it harder for you to stay away from pornography. And that's what I call the slippery slope. And in the new program that I'm developing, I'm having an infographic made uh, about the slippery slope. And I saw someone put a comment like, what's the slippery slope and how do I stay away from it? Basically, I, the analogy I'm going to use here is one of if you've ever gone skiing, which, by the way, I'm terrified of. I've only done two times. Uh, it's the biggest argument my husband and I ever got in, which is hysterical in retrospect, because he made me take ski lessons. And I had five little babies at that time, and I was not up. My brain thinks all the time and did not want to take ski lessons. But... Uh, which was really cute. My son Declan had them hold the lift for me so I could get off. He was like five years old. It was super sweet. And actually I'm pretty good. Turns out I'm pretty good skier. But the idea behind the slippery slope is that if you're in the lodge house, you know, if you're in the clubhouse having a beer and a sandwich at the, at the bar, there's no way you're going to slip down the ski slope. There's no way because you're in your safe zone. You're cozy in the lodge. But now if you come out and you're at the top of the slope, you're not super close, but you're at the top of the slope. You're at more of a risk for going down the slope. Now you get right to the tippy top of that slope and you're poised. All you have to do is move one inch and you are down this slope. That is the analogy of the slippery slope. There's basically three levels that you can keep yourself out of your triggers and your stressors to stay away from your habits. One is you change your routines and your habits. You change your life. That's the offense that I'm always talking about. You change things. The more you change in your life, the easier it will be to create new habits and stay away from old negative habits. That means you're in the lodge having a, having a Sammy you're cozy. There's no risk. So if you create a routine where if you used to watch pornography every Friday night, but now you join a Mejong club on Friday nights, there's no way you'll watch pornography because you're over at your brother's house. There's no way you can slip. You're in the, you're in the lodge. You're in the clubhouse. But if on Friday nights you're at home, but instead you're watching TV out in your living room, you're getting close to the slippery slope. And then if you're at home and you're in your bed on your phone, you are right at the top of that slippery slope and the likelihood that you're going to slide down is higher. So that's the idea behind that. Um, OK, so I got off course there. But what I wanted to tell you is that. When you join NoFap, you get in with a community that's going to support you. And I love the fact that people are putting comments and, and that led me to the slippery slope. OK, so uh, neurotransmitter is your favorite word. Eh, it might be neurochemicals, the Kool-Aid. Neurotransmitters are what we're talking about here because that it's it boils down to that. People think that we're talking about sex here. We're not. We're literally talking about neurotransmitters. That's the essence of our conversation. So yeah, 
that's a great word. Uh, I have words I don't like, but that one is a good word. Uh, okay, Nafi, I'm gonna go back to your question on, so then how do you use your sexual energy? That is a great question. And in the new program I'm making, I have a lesson on sexual transmutation. So if you know the book by Napoleon Hill, it's from 1916, I think, Think and Grow Rich. He has, it's an awesome book. It's really a good book. He has a section where he talks about taking your sexual energy and transmuting it into your purpose. And that's what I talk about here on this channel is getting on purpose. And a new way that I'm talking about it in my new program is to create a brain boosting project. And guess what a brain boosting project does? It gives your brain the neurotransmitters that it's looking for. I couldn't help it. So when you create a brain boosting project, we know from the science that the frontal lobe and the reward center in your brain is struggling. The reward center gets fried out and is desensitized and the prefrontal cortex and the frontal lobe actually shows hypofrontality, not enough activation in the frontal lobe. So when you get yourself into a project that does these three things, first of all, you care about it. So your purpose is in it. It's something you really wanna do. Number two, you're using your mind. Number three, you're using your body. What that is going to do is engage your entire being in a project that you care about, and it's going to increase the activity in your frontal lobe, which will help your executive function skills, which will help your thinking skills, which will help your impulse control skills. It will help you to be able to say no to a compulsive behavior like watching porn or like masturbating. It can help you a lot. And the project is activating your brain in exactly the way that it needs to because you've been activating it on accident in all the wrong ways for a long time. What a brain boosting project will also do for you is it's going to fire up your reward center again in a healthy way. You're not going to be flooding it with neurochemicals. You're going to be giving your brain the appropriate amount of neurochemicals as you take baby steps towards accomplishing the big goal that you've set in your brain boosting project. It's hugely powerful. And I would really encourage everybody to come up with your own project. And it varies for all different people. Think about a thing you love. Think about a thing you've been wanting to do. And I know it's difficult in COVID, but especially if the thing you wanted to do is out there in the world, you can train for that no matter how small your apartment or your flat or your bedroom or your houses, your yard, you can go to a park, you can train for just about anything if you want to. That's how you use your sexual energy. You transmute it into your purpose. Okay, let me uh, keep reading here. How to avoid the urge to relapse. If you have a strong urge, don't know how to stop it, it gets stronger. Uh, so no fat for two weeks. That is, first of all, okay, so that's Jadzia. Hopefully I'm saying your name right. So if you're on your NoFap journey for two weeks and you're succeeding, first of all, I wanna congratulate you and I want to tell you how proud of you I am. I really am. When I write that in the comments, I mean it with my whole heart and my whole being because I know how difficult that this, this is. So the reason I want you to know that this is a major accomplishment, even one day for some people is a major accomplishment that you need to celebrate. When you celebrate it, your brain will say, hmm, I want more of this because I'm getting some of the dopamine, not all of it that porn and masturbation was giving you, but I'm getting dopamine but for rewarding myself for doing the thing that I want to, a goal that I set out for myself. So make sure you celebrate those small wins. When you celebrate the small wins, you are going to fire up your brain with the activation that I just talked about. And I made a video, I still have to post it. Uh, my assistant doesn't work on Fridays and I just made it yesterday. So I have to post it, I'll post it when we get off. Uh, I made a video on how porn disrupts your thinking and what to do about it. And the reason that that becomes important is because what I say in a nutshell in the video, and it's all based on science, which you know I love, it shows that when you start using these thinking skills that I'm talking about, and I break it down in the video, that it that it helps you to be able to have less 
cravings and less urges and to be able to get through them better because you're using your brain in an optimal way. So when you use your brain properly, it gets stronger. The stronger it gets, the less you'll have cravings and urges. So I always tell you in the videos, use as many of the strategies that I'm putting on this channel. More is more. So if you watch the videos and, and I would encourage all of you to get a journal out and start writing some of these things down because they will accumulate. They're like exercises. The more exercises you start doing for your brain, the easier it's going to be for you to get through the cravings and the urges. So the number one thing that you can do during a craving or an urge is to have a plan ahead of time. Think of that craving or that urge as you are standing on the top of that ski slope. So if you were standing on top of the ski slope and you felt that you were about to go down this massive hill, what would you do? You'd run, you'd have less than five seconds, you'd have about three seconds to pivot, turn and run towards the lodge. You need to have that plan ahead of time. You need to know what your lodge is. So obviously the lodge is just an analogy. The lodge is the activities that are gonna keep you away from the top of the slippery slope. And I would encourage you to come up with a nighttime pivot plan and a daytime pivot plan because it can be difficult to have the same plan for the middle of the day or for the middle of the night. And you hopefully have broken down your cycle and tried to figure out kind of when you're most at risk for being at the top of the slippery slope. Those times you need to know what you're going to be doing instead ahead of time. And then you need to know what you're going to do instead of giving into the cravings and urges. And then when you succeed, reward yourself for the small win, because in the reward, you get dopamine and you will move forward in your journey. It all comes together. These strategies all work together. Uh, OK, so I hope that helps you out. Uh, OK, let's see who's here. Anjan. Hello. What's going on? Uh, according to me, I like your name. How's it going? Let's see. OK, so Danny Man writes, kind of embarrassing, doctor. Some of my friends posing some sexy photos. Should I delete my Instagram for 90 days? Uh, yes, yes, you should. I know you don't want to hear it. But uh, as the mom of three beautiful teenage girls, I know exactly what you're talking about. They don't girls don't even mean to do it. I know I should start a whole other channel. Someone's like, you know, talk about all the triggers out there. They're totally out there and you need to stay away from them. I would encourage you to, uh, you know, delete it and fill your Instagram feed with motivation. Uh, and it's funny because I have to remind myself sometimes that like, people's worlds aren't the same as my world, but I've been working on creating my own world for 20 years. So of course I have an Instagram feed, but everything I follow is motivational. I don't follow any people personally, just because I think that it, I know science shows that it creates, you know, FOMO or the fear of missing out, or it gives us uh, skewed versions of people's realities. Uh, so I just don't even follow anybody personally. I don't see what's going on in people's lives. So I don't see any pictures of other human beings. And I would encourage you to do that. Fill your feed with motivation and motivational quotes and motivational ideas, because it's amazing when you put that into your brain. There's a ton of science behind the a positive psychology, it's called. And it came, it's Martin Seligman out of Penn State is where he's the father of positive psychology. So we know the more positive things you put into your brain and your nervous system, the more the negative things bounce off and you don't even, you start to not even see them anymore. And I know that because that's what I do. All my feeds are just filled with things that, you know, give my brain positive juju as I call it. So yeah, you know, I'd encourage you to get off it forever. And I know, you know, if you're younger, you have friends that are on there, but, and it's the way that you connect Anybody who is doing anything too sexy, you know, connect with them on the phone when they're in their champion sweats, connect with them on FaceTime. So you get the real version of them, not the, you know, Instagram version of them. Uh, OK, so hopefully that helps you out. But definitely during the reboot period, but recognize it's still going to be a trigger for you. 
um, you know, even in the end. And just a comment on the 90 day reboot period, because people ask me about the 90 days, the new program that I'm creating comes in basically three different levels. There's a 30 day jumpstart program, there's a 90 day blueprint, and then there's a complete essential guide that has everything you could ever need. And 90 days is kind of a bar in the recovery movement. So we know 30 days is what it takes to definitely jumpstart the brain and the nervous system in the right direction. 90 days kind of helps your nervous system to ebb and flow across 90 days. You'll have highs and you'll have lows and it gives your brain time to unwire the pattern that it's had for so long and to rewire in a healthier version of itself. And you kind of can, for most people, ride out most of the intense storm if you're going to have a storm during those 90 days. And then you have balanced levels in your brain much more so. Plus you have the tools. If you're following a program, it'll take you 90 days to really hit a nice rhythm of using techniques and strategies and, and changing your life, really. You're changing your life for the better and you'll be more on purpose. You'll feel healthier because your brain will be clear. You'll be more motivated to do the things that you want to. And it takes 90 days for that to kind of even off. Um, okay, hey, Sarah. Hey, Mohammed, how's it going? Uh, let's see, S Stevie and Stev from Slovakia. I have a friend who's from Slovakia. So I, uh, I am glad that you are here. Does weed help quit porn? Mm, you're not gonna like the answer here. Yes, it does help theoretically. I always feel bad because I promise you, I'm not a total buzzkill. I know that I probably seem like a massive buzzkill, um, but I have to kill your buzz here a little because we know that most times from the science, most times when people establish a, uh, you know, well, I'll just talk about a frequent, consistent and intense pornography habit. They usually have multiple, you know, addictions or compulsions going on. Marijuana being one of them, alcohol being another. That's kind of the usual trifecta is you have a drink or two, smoke a little marijuana, watch a little YouTube or play a, a little video games. Well, I guess we'll make that four video games. And then before you know it, you're watching porn and masturbating for a long time. So basically what happens is alcohol and weed are going to create disinhibition in your nervous system. That's why people like it so much because it helps you to chill out and it helps you to not think about the things. It, weed in particular, marijuana is proven to kind of chill out that frontal lobe where uh, I'm trained under Dr. Daniel Amen. He talks about a hamster on the wheel up here in the middle of your, it's the anterior cingulate gyrus, the middle frontal area. And that's where like thoughts can really get going and keep going. And when you smoke marijuana, it chills that hamster out. He takes, he takes a little break, which helps you feel better, but it also then, you know, creates disinhibition where you'll go your guard is down basically, and you'll do things that you didn't want to, your willpower reduces. So it can kind of help because it will offset withdrawal symptoms. It's gonna give your brain, you know, a feeling of chill of chilling out while it's not getting the dopamine from a pornography or masturbation habit. But in the long run, you wanna be able to, you know, you if you're gonna use alcohol or marijuana to be able to do that in, uh, you know, a casual way instead of a compulsive way. And when you're thinking about your habits in general, and this goes for anything, because especially people will put comments because they're upset about me saying that pornography can become an addiction, which is proven by science, by the way, um, that they'll go, oh, you know what, going to the gym can be addictive. Anything can become addictive to any particular person. But the reality is there's some activities that are much more likely to become addictive than others. Actually working out is one that people do develop addictions to because it can give you, especially if you work out hard to exhaustion, it can really give your brain a nice flood of neurochemicals that makes it feel good. So a lot of times people will replace working out for, for their pornography habit, but the cautionary tale is to be casual about it. You don't need to work out two or three times a day. I work with people and I know people who work out two or three times a day because they can't exist in their life without getting those hits of neurochemicals three times a day. 
That is not good for anybody, no matter what the activity is. Balance. So if you're going to smoke weed, make sure you're not doing it three times a day. Make sure you're not doing it every single night because that's a compulsive habit. That means you need it. But in the meantime, it could definitely offset some of the pain if you are feeling withdrawal symptoms. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, Chris, hi, Chris. Even as being a little kid, uh, let me see. I, yeah, so, oh, I got you. I see it. it it's bad. I got you. Okay, so there's two comments. I, that's why I clicked on it, trying to see what it was. But even as being, uh, when kids are young, this is when a pornography habit develops, uh, which is why I'm always talking to my beautiful children about not watching pornography so they don't shrink their own brains. And it used to be, science showed that it used to be exposure was around 11 years old. Now it's eight years old, which is just mind blowing to me that our kids are at such risk. So if you're out there and you have children, I encourage you to get the strength to talk to them, especially as you uh, become stronger in your own journey and you conquer it. There's a book out there that's called Good Pictures, Bad Pictures that parents should use to talk to their kids if they don't know how to talk to their kids in another way. Because yeah, at eight years old, if you're exposed to pornography, what science shows, there's studies that show that the impact of pornography on younger brains, the younger the brain, the more easily it can get hooked on pornography because of the neurochemical release that happens. So it can get really bad, really fast and really young for kids. And then what it does is it delays the development of your brain at that young age. We know this from science. So what it does, is it creates that hypofrontality. It fries out your reward system earlier. And we know from science right now that there's a lot of high school students struggling to be able to think. Uh, we also know that it's becoming more difficult for people to get into college and to engage in college. And, you know, women are not... Uh, free of this. It just happens to men a lot more, but a lot more young women, science shows young women are becoming susceptible to pornography like never before. So this is going to be uh, gender neutral soon, but right now it still is outweighed by young men to young women. And it's terrifying. And actually I was just reading a book that this is mind boggling to me if you stay with me for a second, but I was reading a book um, on alcohol, quitting drinking alcohol, and it was designed for, for women. It's a really cool book. It's called Quit Like a Woman uh, by Holly Whitaker. And she was talking about the science in there that more women are drinking alcohol. Alcoholism or alcohol abuse or misuse, if we call it, is up in women. And I would love to see the numbers, except for the science with porn is so difficult because a lot of people don't tell anybody they watch a lot of porn and we just know the metrics from online users, which is literally off the charts. But alcohol misuse is up in women. Now here's my contention, and I bet I'm right, is that Alcohol use is up in women because pornography use is through the roof with men and it changes the dynamic between men and women, which also impacts kids. So this is, it's, and I'm not saying that it all starts with pornography, but it likely has a correlation. So, uh, you know, the younger it, a person gets hooked on it, the worse. Uh, okay. So let me see. Uh, Oh, COVID-19. Yeah. Danny Mann says in COVID-19, it becomes so much more difficult. It is so much more difficult. And it's so much more difficult for me to give you uh, the advice that I want to because we have to switch it so that, you know, that we can try to meet our needs, our sexual desires. We're sexual beings. So like, that's okay. And and it's great, actually, but it's so hard if you don't have a partner or I talk to so many people who have partners, but they are on the other side of the world and they can't connect like they used to. So now they're doing it over a screen. COVID really throws us for a loop. And my best advice is connect with people in intimate ways as much as you can. And you know, in the end, we want you to be able to know exactly what is arouses you sexually and to be able to have that fulfilled with a partner. That is the goal for most people. And so the unfortunate part is that pornography and masturbation literally stands in your way from achieving that goal. And that's why I'm here. It's, you know, it's, 
it will literally prevent you. It prevents people from being able to get the partner that they're looking for. And I know people think it's like the chicken and the egg that if once they find a partner, then they can leave the habits behind. It doesn't work that way. You have to leave the habits behind and then you'll find a partner because your energy will become so much more attractive. Um, and actually, I'm going to stay on this point for just a second, if that's OK, is that in my new program that I'm totally psyched about, I have been including notions from a book called Power Versus Force. I love to read. If you need a book recommendation, reach out to me because I am a voracious reader and I try to integrate it and most of it's based on neuroscience. But the takeaway from this book, which is amazing, he's a PhD MD, is that and this is what I talk about, but I was thinking this is a great way that people can probably wrap their minds around it, is that our brains are working either out in the extremes, too fast, too slow, or with perfect processing speed in the middle. And then that changes the electrical energy field around your body. And I'm always having a discussion with my oldest son, Declan, who's 17. And he's always like, oh, you're going to tell me it has to do with my energy. I'm like, yeah, it does, dude. And so what we know is that our bodies are electromagnetic, cells are electromagnetic. So you give off an energy field and the lowest level of energy is shame. And so in this book, he measured it scientifically, the energy fields of people who are resonating with different energy fields that have emotional correlates. So emotions that are linked up to it. Shame is the lowest. And we know that pornography and masturbation are built on a shame cycle. Shame is at 20. Guilt is at 30. So you may see in the comments when I comment back to people and they're like, I'm feeling so shameful. I'm like, don't feel shameful because it literally will perpetuate your problem. Take your shame, convert it to guilt. And the difference is shame is I am a bad person. Guilt is I'm doing something bad that I don't want to do. So when you shift that, you go up 10 points because it's no longer your essence that's bad. It's the thing you're doing. You, you're, you will increase your energy field, which will change your brain, which of course will affect your neurotransmitters. So then when you do that, when it's guilt, you can get motivated. And then in the book, he lists a lot more of the emotional states that go along with different energy levels and different numbers. But basically you go from shame to guilt. And then most times you have to move through grief and anger so if you're grieving the time you've given away to pornography or masturbation, or if you're just frustrated and annoyed about this whole process and that you're in this situation and you just thought it was a cool habit and now you can't leave it because your brain's totally hooked, get angry, man. Go punch your general because anger is good. It means you're increasing your energy. You're offloading the frustration, which means when you offlet and you move through anger, you move through to courage. And courage is a higher energy level. And then you move through to willingness. And when you're willing to learn and willing to change your routines and habits and willing to become a better version of yourself, then you keep moving through different emotional states and you end up at love. And love is at 500. It's a very high resonating energy field. And it's love for yourself, love for your partner, love for your family, love for your community, love for your work love for your ho your hobbies, all the stuff that I talk about being on purpose. So as you move through the process that you need to go through on this journey, you're increasing the energy in your energy field and you're changing your brain. And that's why it's so important. OK, so now let's keep moving on here. Thanks, Chris, for the comment. Thanks, Danny. Uh, OK, I have to tell you, uh, I will jackhammer you. I have to tell you that in the business of sexual addiction recovery, people who name their emails and their avatars after sexual references usually need the most help. So I would encourage you to maybe come up with a new avatar name because we know that if you change your name to something that motivates you, then you will feel inspired to change your routines and habits, which will increase your brain's energy which will help you ride off into the sunset. Um, you know what? I would love for everybody to hang out, but I've got to tell you, I have eight people in my home right now, eight of them, all my beautiful children and a guest. And we have two dogs. I'm not even kidding. We have two, ha two cats. And my son has a robo dwarf hamster. 
There's not one inch of this place that isn't taken for. So as much as I'd love visitors, I am sorry, we are full. We're like the end, we're full here. Okay, Arcade Station, hello, how are you? Uh, how to stop the fear of withdrawal symptoms? Great question, that's a really awesome question. And flashbacks, porn scene flashbacks, okay. Fear of with fear. Fear is a great word. Let's stay on that. I'm just going to get a drink for a sec. Let's stay on that for a minute. Okay, so what is fear? And I talk about this in my new program because fear is the polar opposite of love. It's literally all of those bad feelings and bad emotional states are fear based. Fear comes from thinking about the past or the future love or high resonance energy in your nervous system comes from being present. So when you fear withdrawal symptoms, you are thinking about the future and you're letting it block you from moving forward. So I am here to tell you that it, the more things you do and the ready, the more ready you are and the more willing and the more courage, your withdrawal symptoms can be less. I've worked with people who have watched porn three hours a day, every day for 20 years, and they have no withdrawal symptoms. You could be one of those people that doesn't have any withdrawal symptoms. That's for real. So you don't have to have fear. I would encourage you to think you're not going to have them, but to be prepared in case you do. But don't fear it because when you fear things, you you are bringing it to life. We know from, again, positive psychology, science and metaphysics, the things that you focus on, you will get. And here's another example from Declan. When we moved to North Carolina, I live in North Carolina. When we moved here uh, eight and a half years ago, before that, I forget what the Disney movie is. Um, I'll think of it. Meet the Robinsons. Meet the Robinsons. And in there, when Deck was little, there was a scene about fire ants. But we lived in Buffalo, New York, where there were no fire ants. But when he was little, he was always concerned about fire ants. And I'm like, babe, there's no fire ants here. Like, you know, it's too cold, no fire ants. When we moved to North Carolina, he still had that in his mind that he was worried about fire ants. I'm not even kidding, this is a true story. First week of school in North Carolina, he goes to school and he's in the field playing soccer and he gets covered from head to toe, bitten all over his body by fire ants. He had to come home, he had to stay home for days. No other kid of mine got one fire ant bite ever since since living here. But in his mind, he was hyper vigilant and hyper focused on fire ants that it drew it into his reality. So do not fear withdrawal symptoms. When a fear of withdrawal comes into your mind, replace it with a good thought that's in the present not in the future or the past, and it will ground you. Grounding is a psychological type of strategy to bring you back to the present. Physically, the way you can ground yourself is take your shoes off and put your feet in the ground. And since moving to North Carolina, I'm literally barefoot all the time. Uh, I'm barefoot now because I love to have my feet touch the ground and be connected to the earth. And in Buffalo, New York, it was too cold. But here it's beautiful even in the winter. So that's a way to ground yourself and keep yourself present physically. You can even try that strategy and it'll bring you back. So porn flashbacks, what's that? That's the past. So if you're thinking about the future in the past, you're having a really hard time staying present. So what you need to do is to work on staying present in your present environment. So here is a strategy that you can use a, a few times a day to bring yourself back to the present. And I do this. I still do this because I like to get in my head and to think about all my stuff. I will listen to my environment and hear what I can hear. I will look around, use your sensory experience to bring you back to the present. So if you get a flashback in your mind, I, I made a video with one strategy that push that flashback out and have prepared something that you love to put in your mind instead. And that might work for you, but that still is a mental construct. Another strategy is bring yourself back to the present moment by grounding yourself, listen to your environment, see your environment, look around, focus. Another strategy is to put your feet on the ground and ground yourself and to feel your palms, feel your body, bring yourself back into your body 
and come out of your mind and that will help you. Uh, okay, hey, uh, I don't know how to say that. Macaretti Polly Tara, hi, how are you? Uh, let's see, oh, thank you for sorting Jackhammer out. I appreciate that, but hopefully he's already uh, heard my recommendation. Okay, let's get through some of these. Let's see, hello. What do I recommend for single men to stop? Uh, a lot of it's applied to married men, but not much. You know, it's not really applied to married men. I don't mean to do that, um, but but maybe. But what I'm trying to encourage everybody is if you want a partner, most people want a partner. So whether you're married or not, most people's goal is to get a partner. So my focus is on that because I want people to be able to establish healthy sexuality with another human being actually here in the world. Um, but being single, and this is, this is a shout out to Daniel, uh, being single is very difficult. So I've made a few videos lately on, you know, what not to do, but if you're single and I know someone wrote, she doesn't know how hard it is being a single man trying to find somebody. If you're single, if your goal is to find a partner, then I encourage you to approach sexuality as a way of trying to find a partner. And, you know, I don't want to encourage anybody to continue masturbating because it is a slippery slope. But, you know, if in the meantime, that's the no fap easy mode. In the meantime, if that's something that can help you with your urges and desires, but I would encourage you to seek out other people. I know it's not easy. My comment back to the person who's like, she doesn't know what it's like to be a dude trying to find a person. I know what it's like being a human being trying to find a partner. And that is not an easy prospect for anybody. But you won't be able to find a partner that you really connect with unless you put yourself in a position to try to do that. And uh, I told somebody the story, which I probably shouldn't even share here, but for me, I don't have a lot of, I have two best friends, but I don't have a lot of friends because honestly, I don't really want them because I'm busy and I like working. I have the hubs. I've got a million kids. I have a nice inner circle, but I've made a goal to try to find more emotionally mature friends to, you know, expand my circle, even in COVID-19. And in COVID-19, I've been successful at doing that by joining a few online types of, uh, things that seem cheesy, but it's a way for me to be able to get out there. And I've actually connected with another woman who were becoming friends, which is a goal. And I'm throwing myself out there a bit to try to find another human being to connect with. That's what I encourage you to do. If you're going to use dating apps, think of it as natural way that you would try to find a sexual partner, a partner for for some time. It doesn't have to be for marriage or for life. And actually a book that I'm also referencing in my new program on healthy sexuality after you recover from sex addiction, that book says that there's, th and it's based on science, Helen Fisher's science. Basically there's three steps in finding a sexual partner. The first is lust, but it can be healthy lust. If you see someone from across the room and you know, you're digging them and they're digging you and you're vibing your energy. My, my children have asked me, my daughter, Sersha asked me to stop saying the word vibing. I'm sorry. I, it's, it's like neurotransmitters. It just comes out. So if your energy is connecting with another person, then that is attraction and it should be lustful, right? Because if you don't know a person and you see them from across the room or you see them on zoom game night that you signed up for begrudgingly because Dr. Trish Lee told you to, if you see that person and you feel a connection, that's the beginning of it. But then there's two more phases of, of healthy sexuality and getting into a relationship for healthy sexuality. Phase two is bonding. So it goes beyond lust. It goes beyond just wanting to be with that person for physical pleasure and sexual gratification. So then that's a bonding moment. And that's when you decide you want to be with that person exclusively for some amount of time. You don't have to marry them. You don't have to, you know, devote your entire life to them, but you, you and the partner make the decision that we're in this for a while together. We are a couple. This is a coupleship. And then if you decide to build a family and it goes back to evolutionarily that, you know, we're designed to have sex for procreation so that we can build families and, carry on the human race. So to be able to move to the next step, three, phase three is that 
you go through some hard times with that person. It's not lust and it's barely bonding, but it's rupture and repair where, uh, you know, I've been married to my hubs for 20 years. We've had a lot of challenges that, you know, test the limits of our relationship. And then we come back together and we're able to get over those challenges together, which makes our relationship stronger. And it makes our physical relationship stronger too, because we've gotten closer because of these other elements. That is what I'm looking for, for people, because that's most people's goals. So do some activities that put you in touch with other people so that you can start with that glance across the room, have some lust, go for some coffee, do some bonding, maybe have dinner a week later, do some more bonding, move you into a sexual relationship. And I know that that is, you know, not the answer people are looking for, but that is the way to do it in, uh, you know, this day and age. Okay. So let me, oh, my old comments are gone and I don't know if I can see them because they're, they're continuing to go here. So uh, thank you. Thank you for the support, James and Jack Hammer. Uh, I am here for you all. I would. There's no amount of money you could pay me to run the country. Uh, yeah, porn is suck. Say sick half. Uh, I'm sure I'm butchering that, but yes, porn is incredibly harmful for girls. I made one video because uh, I don't want to focus on girls so much on the channel because I know it's this is a epidemic for young men. So very harmful for girls. And in that video, I talk about the science that shows that it becomes more addictive earlier for girls and it's harder for girls to come back out of that addiction. So that can be really damaging. Uh, okay. Sites like OnlyFans. I know, uh, David, uh, sites like OnlyFans, uh, what girls gain from producing that comment. Unfortunately, we know from science too, that I had this discussion with my beautiful daughter, Fiona, who's 15. I had this discussion the other day because she has a mission to help people who are uh, strippers, as she puts it. So uh, we were having this discussion and she's like, you know, trying to find a healthy way for strippers to strip so that they can make a lot of money and pay their bills. And you know, we had a discussion that kind of springboarded off that. Most people who are putting themselves in a position where they are allowing their bodies to be objectified have low self-esteem, even though they may not seem to on the surface. Science supports that. So that's the reason that people are putting themselves out there in sexy images or on OnlyFans. It's because that is how they are gleaning their self-confidence and self-esteem. Now, if you've been around my channel for a little while, and this is in my new program, because this is fundamental, you have to fill the holes inside yourself and not need anybody else to. You have to be whole and healthy to be able to be with another person. So girls who do that, they're trying to fill the holes inside by having other people uh, comment on how beautiful or how hot they are or anything like that. When you feel good on the inside, you don't need that from someone else. Here's an example. And I love my husband. I adore my husband. Uh, I bought what I think are these cute. They're not that sexy because I have five children who are here at all times. So it's just not appropriate. But I bought these little pajamas. I think they're great. He hates them. <laughs> so I put them on. I come out like, you know, all my kids are around, but I'm dancing around. They're kind of little because it's like a million degrees in this house all the time these days. Anyway, he's like, those are the worst. And I'm like, good thing I don't need you to like them because I love them. And I still love them, even though he doesn't like them. And I don't need him to. And, and he doesn't need me to like his stuff. He'll come out and he'll be like, uh, what did he say? He was wearing a hat. We went for a run the other day and his hair was sticking out weird from the front. And he goes, uh, how does my hair look? And I said, should I answer it like Trish would answer or should I answer it like Kaz would answer? Because Kaz would go, your hair looks bad. And what it meant was, yeah, your hair looks weird sticking out. But I said, it looks fine. Let's roll. But so the point is, he doesn't need to. Like, he doesn't need me to like his hair. He can go to work wearing his hair or his, you know, shoes and the way he likes it because he doesn't need me to like all of his stuff. That's how you get whole and healthy on the inside. And when you leave porn behind, porn's filling some holes for you, whether you know it or not. It's filling a need for you. Uh, so when you leave it behind, the reason I design my programs the way that I do is because you have to fill the holes yourself. 
You have to get confident. You have to be on purpose in your work. You have to love what you do. And I talk to people all the time in consultations and they're like, I have two jobs and I hate them both. And the first thing I say is then you need two new jobs. You can't go to jobs that you hate every day. And I gave the example, I've, I've talked about all of my kids. I might as well just talk about the last two of them. But my daughter, Afa had a job she didn't like. And now she works at Starbucks. She's totally loving it, totally rocking out. She's a different person because she goes to a job she loves opposed to going to a job she doesn't like. I'll find a way to talk about Seamus in a few minutes. But uh, OK, so let's see. I abstained from PMO for 30 days. This is Alex. Um, hey, Alex, abstain from PMO. PMO for 30 days, then relapse for two days. Did, did I lose all my gains? No, absolutely not. And I'm going to talk about this from a brain perspective. And I am putting together a playlist, but I'm definitely making a video over the weekend where I talk about this. And I'm going to make some videos that have slides just to show you a couple brain things. And just since we're here, uh, shameless plug for hopefully Instagram. Once I start doing it consistently, I'm going to put all the images on Instagram too, because that's an easy way for me to fire up an image with something that I'm talking about. Um, but what I was going to tell you is I work with so many people who are on this journey and they're using the brain training headband. I'm going to make a video this week on explaining it in detail and showing you graphs of what you can see. Basically, every time you do a brain training session, it's teaching your brain to make that better energy in the middle. It produces a graph of brain performance that you see immediately on your phone. And then if you're working with me, I get it in my online dashboard. So I pull people's graphs up and I can see when they've relapsed in their brain graphs because it'll look you know, typical or typical for someone who's recovering from watching porn. And I will explain what that looks like in a video. But then there will be a day where the way that it measures it is if your brain is active, neutral or calm. And most people's brains start active and across their session becomes neutral and they dip into the calm for a little while. If you've had a relapse, you give your brain this massive flood of dopamine and then a person will get on their session and they'll be 95 percent calm which like is very difficult for the average person, almost impossible for someone who's re, you know rebooting their brain from a porn habit. So my point is when you, if you go 30 days and then you have a relapse, just know that you flooded your brain with dopamine, but you've only done it once in the 30 days. So you, you haven't lost all your gains, but you need to, it's going to take a day or two for your brain to come back from that dopamine flood. And then you need to get back on the horse. And you know how I use a lot of analogies to help people understand the analogy there is if you decided to lose some weight and you didn't, you ate healthy for 30 days and then you had a piece of cake. Did you lose your 30 days of eating healthy? No, but you can't eat cake. Like you ate it once. You can't eat it the next day. You have to just get back to not, eating cake because that is how you stay the course in your journey. Uh, my husband and I have been on a detox cleanse for two weeks now, which means it's just raw vegetables, no drink, actually like no eating and no drinking. And so, you know, this is cleaning out my system. We're taking a ton of supplements. It's flushing me out. What it's going to do is make it so my habits are better and I'll be able to keep riding it out. That's what it needs to do for you. Certainly don't beat yourself up about it because it'll create a shame cycle and I don't want you to go there. I want you to feel a little guilty and go, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. I'm not going to do it again. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to change something so I can succeed. I encourage you to break down. Why did you relapse? What was going on? Think about the slippery slope. How'd you get to the top of the slippery slope? What were you thinking? What were you feeling? What were you doing? Change something, make something different so you don't end up on the slippery slope. Find out a way to get in the lodge, do things that you love. You have to change something. And another thing is there's no winning and losing in this journey. There's winning and learning. Slips and relapses are how you learn. You need to learn from that experience or you're going to find yourself in it again. Uh, OK, how to stop uh, the cycle of PMO. I've seen even if we do no fab streaks, we are still addicted from the inside. Not if you work with me or not. That is, this is Arcade Station. Arcade Station, great question. And I've worked with so many people who have done many, many other programs, have gone to inpatient rehab multiple times. You have to heal the inside. When you change how you exist on the inside, it changes 
how you exist on the outside and you no longer need pornography. And so for me, I tell people this all the time, you can't just say, okay, it starts today. I'm never watching porn again and then not change anything. You have to say it starts today. I'm not consuming anymore, but I'm going to do this for my offense. This is my pivot plan. This is how I'm going to deal with the trauma in my past. This is how I'm changing my routines, behaviors, habits, thought processes, emotions in the present. And these are my future goals. And then when you do that, that's how my program is designed. When you do those things, you've you've hit everything that you need to. You become a new person on the inside. You just no longer need the habit. You don't have to white knuckle it. You don't ever think about it. You grow from the inside out. And that's how you do it. You get rid of it on the inside. So uh, my new program is hopefully going to be out. Not hopefully. I'm going to make sure it's out March 1st so that we can you know, start doing that for everybody. Uh, okay, so David Ortiz, can you bring us some cold truth about what? Let's see, Think and Grow Rich, 1937. Thank you. I knew it was right around there. Uh, David, let's see. I don't know what the cold truth is. You know how I like to spit some straight facts, so I'm here for it. Uh, okay. Okay, Daniel, I already read that one. Okay, so Rat Ratutam, welcome. I found that I go into a deeper slope in porn when I tend to watch more porn. How do I stop that? That's exactly right. That's the slippery aspect of the slope. You have to commit. So here's what you need to be able to start and to not go deeper. You need to commit. Commitment is the first thing. And what, remember when I was talking about how energy increases? It increases because you kind of go through that grieving process and then you end up at courage and willingness. You need to gain the strength to go, this isn't for me anymore. And it doesn't even have to be judgmental. It is like this habit is not serving me. And that's why my husband and I did the detox cleanse because we're like, we've been eating too much junk. We've been drinking and which is not our normal mojo and, you know, hashtag COVID-19. So we're like, we need to reboot the system. And it was a commitment and it's been easy to not eat food, uh, even though, you know, you, you may want to. So it's like, I'm committed to this and it just becomes easier. Then you establish discipline and it's not necessarily willpower. I know we talk about willpower a lot, but it's more like discipline. So you're establishing new routines and habits that comes from discipline. And, you know, you work out when you're supposed to work out. You do your work when you're supposed to do your work. You spend time with your family when it's family time. That's discipline. You follow a routine. And I have a lot of lessons in my new program on how to establish the discipline that you need to. Uh, will your face change when you quit porn? Yeah, your everything's going to change, my friend. That's Chris's comments. Everything changes. You look better. You feel better. You move differently. You're more confident. Your energy in your brain and body changes. You become more attractive. You'll pull people to you. It's amazing. Uh, and I've seen people's comments that say, you know, that I know I'm repelling women because, uh, you know, it's they can tell that I'm watching a lot of porn. Everything will change for you. Uh, yeah. Uh, YB understand. Has anyone in my life been affected by porn? Yes. And that's half the reason that I'm here. Not half. That's 99% of the reason that I'm here because I've seen the devastation that happens to families. I, from a first person perspective and when I found out that it's a brain thing as a brain professional, I was literally desperately outraged, which I try not to be because of the whole energy thing I just talked about. But it was a massive motivator for me because I have people that I love whose families have been just destroyed. And I have a colleague who calls pornography the silent family killer. I've seen families killed and I in my world and I refuse to let that happen to all of you. So that is why I'm here for the work. Uh, can a fetish or king practice several times in real life be gotten rid of? Yeah, definitely. Anything you want to get rid of can get be, can be gotten rid of. That's the reality. So uh, fetishes, I've talked about this before, and they come in all shapes and sizes. Really what a fetish is to me, at least, is what can happen and does happen many times the way that a fetish develops is something happened in your real life surrounding an activity, a sexual activity or some type of 
scenario, sometimes there's trauma, something was performed on you when you were a little child. The way that that becomes a fetish is the way your nervous system gains control over traumas is it reenacts them which is so terrible for the person who suffers. So that's why when we look back in my past, present, future approach, if there's anything in there that you suffered and now you do, it's because your brain hasn't released it and hasn't dealt with it. What a trauma like that does is it creates neuro rigidity, like gets this hold on your brain. And so that's the opposite of neuroplasticity. We have to free your brain from that neuro rigidity so it can become plastic again and it can change the way that it's performing so you can live your best life. So the reason a fetish might develop is because something may have happened in your past that created this neuro rigidity around this act. Then you start either acting it out in your life or watching it in porn. It can also just be established from watching it so much in porn. So if you're watching the same thing and there's all different genres and all different acts, if you're watching the same thing over and over and over, it is grooving a neural pathway in your brain that will want to be grooved over and over and over. And the way to get rid of it is to no longer go down that path, let that path grow over and go down a healthier sexual path. But it can absolutely be gotten rid of uh, because... It's just a matter of not doing, you know, not going down that neural path again. Um, okay, so let's see. When you mention your brain shrinks, do you mean it's activity or literally physically? Literally physically, isn't that incredible? And that's bizarre. Thank you for the question. Um, I'm gonna put the picture today on my Instagram feed of there is an image of a healthy brain and these are my images. I have different images from QEG brain maps, which I will put up. They're just a little bit more abstract and it can be more difficult to understand what you're looking at, but I'm gonna teach you all how to look at it and then you'll be able to know. Um, but there is a PET scan and there's fMRI scans that I'm gonna put up. The PET scan shows a healthy brain and it's all rainbowy colors, but basically you can see that it's full. The color is filled out. Then there is a brain of a heroin addict that has some holes and that's holes in size and activity. And then there is a brain of someone who's been addicted to pornography and it has even bigger holes. So the science shows that your brain actually shrinks and the activity decreases, which is terrifying. But the good news is going back to that freeing up the neuro rigidity and getting neuroplasticity going, your brain can change. It can heal completely. Our nerve, our, all the cells in our body basically are always regenerating. That's why sleep is so important. I have a new uh, lesson on sleep in my new program. Sleep is when our cells regenerate and restore themselves at night. And I know pornography, you know, you know, because I talked to a lot of people can really disrupt your sleep cycle. So when your brain's getting restorative sleep, when you no longer watch porn, your, your cells will heal themselves and your brain will become, it's basically fat on your cells. The myelin is fat. Your cells will beef up and become fatter and healthier and your activity will increase simultaneously. And I have worked with lots of people who not only get back to where they were, but they become better. Um, okay, so Kendra talks about, wants to know about urges, which I think I've already talked about. Do, do urges um, mess with your reward system? Great question. Um, uh, and the, I'm going to give you the short version be, so we can, I can try to get through the rest of the questions so we can wrap up in just a few minutes. Um, so when you have an urge, if you have a thought that pops into your mind, it will release dopamine. So I'm calling that a dopamine hit. So if you're on Instagram, you're looking at images you're, and you're cruising through, you're getting dopamine drips. If you have a thought, you're getting a hit of dopamine. It's a little bit bigger than the dopamine drip than that you've seen on an Instagram image. The longer you linger in the urge thought, even if you're able to stay away from giving into the urge or craving, the longer that you linger in the thought, the more dopamine you're giving your brain. That's why you wanna get out of that thought right away, either ground yourself, get back to the present, or think of a different thought that gives you dopamine so you can couple the dopamine release to a new healthy thought because you wanna break that cycle of porn thought, urge craving, dopamine. That's the pattern interrupt that we're going for. Uh, okay, I hope that helps. Let's see, no fat for 30 days. Wanna know why it's wrong to masturbate. Uh, 
and, and especially if you're not in a relationship, I already talked about that is that it's giving your brain dopamine and oxytocin. So we'll talk about a different neurotransmitter. I haven't said the word in a little while, right? Uh, I love this. I have to remember, I have to look back who said that because that cracks me up and now I'll be saying neurotransmitter left and right. But it gives your brain oxytocin and oxytocin is the neurotransmitter of love, lust and labor. It couples your brain to whatever you're getting this neurochemical release from. So if you're masturbating, you are coupling your brain to yourself sexually. I don't want that for people. I don't want that for you. I want you to couple your brain to a lovely human being in the world, also known as your honey, uh, because most people want a relationship. And, and we can talk about the people who don't want a relationship in a minute, but it's the 99.99999% want a relationship with another human being and want to have sex in the real world. So you can't couple your, your brain to yourself because if it's coupled to yourself, it doesn't want to be coupled to another human being because of desensitization and habituation. When you masturbate, you can give yourself so much more stimulation and arousal and sensation. And especially if you're coupling it to fantasy in your mind from pornography that you cannot possibly get from a partner. So it will make it almost impossible for you to couple your brain to another human being. And that's why I said before, you're blocking yourself like a masturbation habit is just blocking yourself from reaching your full potential in your work, in your relationships, in your hobbies, but also with your partner because you've coupled yourself to yourself. And you know, you don't want that. Uh, okay, so let me see here. Can you stop a masturbation addiction by having sex with someone else? Uh, no, unfortunately not, unless you stop masturbating and you're having sex with someone else, you're staying present and you're rebooting your brain and you're rebooting the arousal levels. So I guess the answer is yes, if that's what you meant, like you're gonna leave masturbation behind. Your brain will unwire from the masturbation habit and it will rewire itself onto a person. That's definitely what I am a proponent of. Um, how do I determine when someone needs therapy? So I'm not a mental health professional, I'll tell you that. And I always put that in the comments and um, I proudly am not. So uh, I was actually, I needed one more credit to be able to be a one more class, three more credits um, to be a mental health professional. I chose not to do that. And I actually was accepted to medical school, which I also chose not to go to. Um, but how someone needs therapy, is it's really to me it's like the levels of support a person needs so in the programs that i'm creating it's coaching but it's all based on neuroscience and sexual addiction recovery uh which i'm trained through the american academy of sex addiction therapists so um but it's the amount of support a person needs my new programs have three levels of support and you can choose which level you need if you need a little support, I'm here for it. Medium, large, plus then there's accountability coaching and neuro coaching. So if you need a lot of support, breaking down your past, your present and your future and creating what you need to, then you need more support. And then you may need to add the brain training headband, which is so helpful for so many people. Um, you know, it's the matter, it's a matter of support. And Usually it's self-awareness, the ability to move through a program by yourself and to be able to follow strategies and to implement them, to learn from them. Uh, so I guess like if you're autodidactic, meaning you're a really good self learner and you don't need a ton of support, then you might not need therapy or more support. If you need someone to tell you what to do and to hold you accountable to that, then get that support because that is how you will be um, successful. Okay. Uh, okay, so I don't know if it's S Sneel, Sneel Y man, uh, Sneely man. I don't know. But anyways, your question is recently my partner has been into watching as well with me. We both regret it afterwards. Our, I already have a problem. Her wanting to makes the temptation heavy. How to approach stopping. Okay. Now I work with a lot of partners and I have for a long time too. I will tell you that. And I could be wrong about your particular partner, but I'm going to tell you what happens with partners along this journey. And this is a journey you watching pornography for two years, five years, 10 years. If your partner's been with you, they've been on that journey with you, even though you don't know it and they don't know it. And we can talk about that later, but they may, your partner might be saying, you know what, I'm going to watch with you because 
she, I think it's a she, yeah, she knows that you're going to watch it without her. So it's a way for her to try to control or, or have some say in this. So she may have, without even knowing it, convinced herself that if you and her watch it together, that it will be better for your relationship and that you don't have to stop because she can teach yourself to like it. There's so many women who do that. That is a band-aid, my friend. That's going to last this long. So I would encourage you to leave the habit behind for both of you. Likely she's not even that into it because that's what happens for most women, especially if she's like coming on board with this and she hasn't had her own habit um, established before. You know, we know women can have a habit established, but her coming into it with you, it's time to end it. And how you approach stopping is you yourself stop. And she'll probably stop too, because she's probably not that into it. You can join my programs when they're out. I have my $50 short course, which will be available until the new programs are available. It's a huge value. If you haven't signed up for the $50 short course, totally encourage you to do it because a lot of people have emailed me saying that it's a really good tool for them to get started. Um, so do that. It would really help you out. How do I deal with gu guilty conscience after that I'm somehow becoming a closet misogynist by relapsing? That's a real thing because we know porn creates, um, you know, low grade hatred for women, even though you might think you're appreciating them. So use your guilt for motivation. Do not beat yourself up. Say, you know what? This is the thing that I don't want to be involved in anymore. I'm going to commit to change. I'm going to put the strategies in place that will affect that change. And I'm going to succeed. Use your guilt for motivation. Uh, let's see, do competitive games health, both physical and Esports, yeah, they do because it'll give your brain a uh, a brain boosting project. So definitely, but again, don't play, especially if it's esports. I love the idea of esports. Let me talk about my beautiful son Seamus, who is a an epic gamer. He has a Twitch account and he's all twitchy and he streams and all that. But you know, you have to modulate that, just like I modulated for him because prefrontal cortex, prefrontal cortices, and Frontal lobes don't develop until you're 28. So you really don't want to do any excessive gaming. But the competition aspect can be really good for you because you're on purpose. You're using your mind. And especially if you're out playing actual soccer, you're using your body. But esports can do the same thing. What do I mean by reward yourself? Literally reward yourself. And think of five things that you like that are not sexual and triggering. Five things that you like. We know food works. So I'm a huge fan when I'm not detoxing of dark chocolate with sea salt. Now that is some delicious stuff. And we will do mindful chocolating around here. When we celebrate something, we'll have, unless my kids steal it, which happens all the time, uh, my stash of you know beautiful high-end dark chocolate with sea salt. You can literally do that. If you like lattes, get yourself a latte. If you like to take a walk in nature, then reward yourself for a win by a beautiful hike in nature. Do something that feels good to you, a, a reward, something that uh, uh, my daughter, Fiona, she said to me one time, and actually I haven't watched in a long time. I used to watch Grey's Anatomy back in the day, and I would call it my guilty pleasure on Thursday nights. And she was wise beyond her years when she told me to stop calling it a guilty pleasure because it's just a pleasure. I thought that was awesome. But for me, it was the only one hour that the kids would not come near me and they were young and I would go and watch TV and, you know, have like one hour solitude where I didn't have to get off the couch. And it was amazing. Do something like that for yourself. Um, okay. So get yourself. Is it possible for porn to kill someone? You know what? That is a really good question. And I will look that up to see if that's ever happened. What is more likely is it's probably like um, head injuries with you know, football players and that. You know how there was a movie called Concussion with Will Smith out, which was very, what I was going to say is I probably won't be able to find the science even if it exists because it's a controversial aspect. And we know that when people have multiple concussions, it basically leads to death, but it's this wild chain. And I'll tell you it real quick because porn's probably the same way. And if it hasn't been proven yet, guarantee it'll be proven like this in the future is that when it comes to head injuries and concussion, one concussion, it knocks the energy in your brain lower, just like 
porn does, and it damages the cells. So your brain basically becomes smaller. It's a very similar mechanism from a physical trauma and it's called chronic encephalitis. So CTE, chronic traumatic encephalitis, meaning you've had multiple concussions. So your brain's energy goes lower and it keeps kind of shrinking because the cells are dying. They're not regenerating. And when you have multiple concussions, what has happened, and if you don't believe me, uh, Boston University, the CTE, um, I forget what they call it, but like unit at Boston University is studying all of the NFL players who die. They're examining their brains. Now they have a couple college uh, football players' brains. And the last time I checked, it was one high school player's brain. And what it has resulted is it leads to mental health issues like anxiety and depression, mood swings, all the stuff that porn leads to. Then it leads to impaired decision making and impulse control issues. So I have an image of the timeline. I should share this because it's crazy. The timeline of all of the NFL players who have died They've examined their brains. They all have CTE and most of them have died in wild, unnatural ways. So one of them who played for the Pittsburgh Steelers and, you know, I was from Buffalo, was driving from Pittsburgh to Buffalo and just ran his car at 100 miles per hour off the road. Another football player drank radiator fluid and died from drinking radiator fluid because it creates all these mental health issues, impairs judgment, uh, basically can create like early onset dementia and Alzheimer's creates motor disorders like Parkinson's disease. That's what the brain pattern of pornography consumption will lead to the older someone gets and doesn't repair their brain through neuroplasticity. So I would bet the answer is yes, but I doubt I'll be able to find a trail. Uh, but that's an awesome question. How do you get out? So that was EBZ's ghostwriter, Eb's ghostwriter. Thank you for a super awesome question there. Um, how to get out from underneath edging. Uh, I have made a video on edging. You have to stop cold turkey. Edging in particular is going to be massively difficult for you to back yourself out of. Um, hey, Leonardo from per Peru. I'm going to have to wrap up because uh, I have appointments starting at noon. So I'm going to just kind of cruise down some of these questions. 58 Days free, Jason. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I know. Tough being single, my friend, but the benefits outweigh uh, the losses there. Is addiction to porn almost as bad as cancer? Uh, I say it's worse because uh, we have methods of, um, you know, curing cancer these days. And if you don't stop your habit, you know, it's going to affect your system in a very same, in a very similar way. No fap for five months, Shaheen or Shaheen 096, or feeling stronger. You got it, my friend. Keep going. Uh, yeah, someone, you know, EBZ's Ebbs Ghostwriter says it should be outlawed. It totally should be outlawed, but that can't be my mission, unfortunately. I care about people. I'm here to support you all, not to go after the man, even though I have historically had a damn the man approach, but absolutely uh yeah i know vishal it just takes the name to make me watch i know i know friend you need to get out of that uh william of orange did nothing wrong i keep meaning to look that up because i don't know what william of orange did at all but i love that name i have to find out what he did okay so hello there friend Courses. Yeah, I do have in courses for improving focus. Major problem is can't focus on anything, especially on things I know I should do. You have to back out the habit. And I made a video and I'm, that's the video that I'm posting next on how you can improve your focus. Short version is you have to figure out what piece of focus is difficult and practice that. But when you start backing out the habit, like I already told you, it's going to start coming online. Uh, okay. Wondered for five years. Oh, the question on morning wood. I knew we were going to go there. Someone wrote to me that, you know, morning wood isn't showing up. Is that bad? No, it's not bad. It's good. So why does it stop while you're watching porn? Well, the if you're always gratifying and satisfying your needs, then it might stop. But uh, why does it return when you stop watching? It can be a healthy aspect for craving sexuality in the real world. But I will tell you, it happens in both ways for people. Uh, my view on prostitutes when there's no other way to have sexual relationships. I'm not a fan of prostitution, as you can imagine, because that is just, it's actually the same as pornography, 
but worse because it's in real life. So typically what happens for people is that they goes back to habituation and desensitization. When you're watching porn, your brain is, you know, getting more and more neurotransmitters. And then at a certain point, it can't, if you're edging and you're watching really intense scenes, it can't get enough. It literally can't get enough anymore. It has to level up. And if you're in this position, I feel for you because it is your brain. It's the hijacker going, you know what, dude, watching it's okay, but I got a fabulous idea. Let's find someone in the real world to do those things with. So that's webcam sex for some people, uh, phone sex for some people, other people go out and hire prostitutes and the science on prostitutes and actually anecdotally, it's anecdotal, it's qualitative, meaning like what prostitutes say is that the people who hire them want the scenes that they've seen in pornography played out in real life. So that's taking fantasy to on steroids, bringing it into the world. And that's not a healthy way to do it. That's not connection. That's not healthy sexuality. It's not good for you. You're better off sticking with a possibly low grade masturbation habit while you're trying to find a partner that you actually care about and you want to have a whole healthy sexual relationship with. Um, daily routine of ex exercise, expert, uh, expedite. This is Crazer123. Can it expedite the process of neuroplasticity and curing porn induced erectile dysfunction? Yes, yes, it can. And I have my hubs putting together, my husband, Dr. Cosmos Lee, putting together um, a supplement protocol for erectile dysfunction. He's on it and he's putting together affordable supplements. I'm going to have it. I'm having my website rebuilt, having a new. Um, a new website built and on there, I'm going to have a store for supplements, especially for erectile dysfunction. And I was talking with him about the erectile dysfunction piece. And he has um, just a couple supplements that he's been using with people for a long time. So you can look for that because that'll help it come online too. Uh, okay. So let me see here. How to, this is from Siddhartha, make a video on how to avoid it if you have a particular taste of porn. You know, that's fetish. I made one video on fetish and you have to back yourself out. Uh, Siddhartha, no stealing money from your parents because that will create more of a shame cycle. And I, people ask me to offer my programs for free and I don't really do that. It's not to be mean, but what it is, is I value them. And if I'm going to ask people to pay for them, then I can't give them away for free. And that's why I'm trying to put as much content on YouTube. And I have awesome playlists coming, more playlists coming to this channel too. So, uh, yep, I've already talked about porn and masturbation affecting mental health. That's, let's see, do you think it's wise to taper off porn with plain fapping, no external stimuli? That's Lance Kennedy. Thanks for the question. I basically answered that. If you feel like you need to, and you can do it without, uh, you know, without fantasizing, then, then you can try that. But I think going cold turkey is a better way. Um, I think I'm looking through them. Um, uh, yeah, there are food. So Stevie and Stev asks if there's chemicals or compounds from food and nutrition that can help reduce urges and triggers. Absolutely. And I'm putting that together for the new program too. Uh, long story short here, the best advice is for you to try to eat as clean as possible. Try not to eat anything that's processed because those will be toxins that your neuro, your nervous system and your brain will have to deal with, which, you know, if you eat a bag of Doritos and you follow it with a chocolate chip cookie, your system is processing all of that. And when it's doing it, your discipline and your willpower comes down and then your brain goes, hmm, I got a fabulous idea. Let's go watch some porn and masturbate. But if you're all clean and you had celery and grilled chicken, your system's feeling better and your system goes, I got a good idea. Let's go do some crunches. And so it can create less neurotoxins. Uh, oh, Nessa, thank you. Thank you for saying I look good today. But remember, I am like Yoda. Focus on the message. Uh, okay, let me see. Yep, I think porn should be outlawed too because it's destroying the world and let's, let's uh, cure it from the inside out by healing ourselves. I think, you know, you know the saying, 
be the change. We're being the change here. So, um, and actually something happened the other day where I had to, um, actually my son Declan, he was really cute. And he, he said one thing, I'm trying to think of what he said. Oh, he said, don't be annoyed, which I try not to be offended by anything, but he said, don't be annoyed by that because the people who are annoyed are the ones who carry the burden. And you know, he got that from me, but he fed it back to me because I was frustrated about a professional who was objectifying and using sex to sell their highly professional services. And that's all I'm gonna say, because it's gonna become a rant. But I was really upset by that because I'm like, this is like the least coolest thing I've seen in a long time. And I was going into attack mode, which I try not to attack. Then I had to remember, I am trying to be the light in the darkness here for all of us. So when you shine light on something, the darkness goes away. When you create darkness in yourself and you go towards darkness, there's just more darkness. So we're going to be the light. We're going to be the light in the world here. And we're going to change. Um, we're going to help people help themselves and we're going to create a ripple effect of change. If you yourself stop watching porn today and you can be successful and your demeanor changes and there's no more Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, your children's demeanor will change. Your partner's demeanor will change. That's a ripple effect. Your parents will chill out without even knowing what's going on. Your employer, your interactions with your employer will change. It will create a massive ripple effect of change if you alone stop watching pornography and don't even worry about the industry. That is what we are going for. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about prostate too because semen retention mode damaging the prostate is, I'm going to look up the science, but I know anecdotally that your prostate's going to be fine if you don't masturbate every day. You're going to be just fine. And we know from nocturnal emissions or wet dreams, your, your system's going to offload it when it needs to. And it's going to do that when it's regulating. But again, the goal is if you're out to get yourself a partner and start having some healthy sex, that's just for a time while your system's rebooting itself. Uh, yeah, porn and masturbation kill motivation and enthusiasm. And again, it's because when you're watching it, you're getting this flood of neurochemicals that makes your brain feel so good that when you get back into the world, it can't get those neurochemicals and it feels so bad. You're unmotivated. You're not enthusiastic. Your life can become depressed, unmotivated, anxious. Uh, it can really do bad things to you. That's also arcade arcade station asks about feeling blackness or brain fog. That's exactly what happens. It's the high highs from the dopamine and the low lows from not. And yes, it's very bad. Uh, beer rules from username. Uh, you know what? I, I, I'm not a huge fan of the beer, but Super Bowl Sunday's coming up, even though I haven't been eating or drinking. So probably, uh, let's see. Uh, okay. I'm going to, Keep moving down here because we're going to wrap up. We've been here for an hour and a half. I have to thank you all. Um, okay, so before I thank you and wrap up, neurological books to suggest for brain development. There's two great books by Norman Doidge, which is The Brain That Heals Itself and The Brain's Way of Healing, I think they're called. Those are really great. Um, a, a good start. And in my new program, every level has reading suggestions. So it's going to be great. I've been, I've been digging out all my books and they're all around. Um, how, let's see, how do I feel about taking kids away from parents that are watching porn? This one's kind of loaded here, but, uh, put them into foster care. Mm, that is not a good, I don't, hopefully, uh, it depends, you know, that's all situational, but, Hopefully, like anything, people can change. Uh, the myths of no fab. Uh, Arcade Station asks what the myths of no fab are. I'm going to make no fab videos. Um, I don't know what you mean. Like if you mean that things that aren't true, I'll have to think about that one. And let's see, I'm just going down. Yep. Planning uh, a book list. Absolutely. William of Orange did nothing wrong. Absolutely. Getting a book list out there for sure. Uh, okay. I'm just kind of cruising through. 
a book I can recommend on overcoming porn and masturbation. There's a couple good ones, but you know what book I really like and I keep meaning to reach out to the author. It is called Thriving in the 21st Century by Havard Mila. And uh, it's a sh small little book, but it's one that I like the most. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna have to wrap up because it is time for me to get back to my life. Thank you so much for joining me here. If you have a question that I haven't been able to answer here, please reach out to me and put it in the comments. I try to go through uh, the comments on Wednesday nights and Saturday mornings when I take my precious daughter to her horseback riding. I'm sure the people at the barn think I'm a total nut job. She, she takes horse lessons and I sit there responding to comments, but I find it fun uh, way to be out there. And uh, so I try to at least do it on Wednesdays and Saturdays to get everybody's comments answered and uh so if you have a uh, if you have a question put it in the comments of my videos or you can email me i'm always happy to answer trish at drtrishley.com i get a lot of emails these days so sometimes it's hard for me i thank you all for joining me today i wanted to tell you too that i am going to be doing regular youtube lives once a month and i'm creating a free group for people that will be over zoom you can look for that soon. Soon, I'm putting the program together and it includes free, low pr price point, medium price point and high price point. And that way I'm hoping to be able to help each and every one of you. You don't have to steal money from your parents. You can get support here on YouTube and in a group. And if you have the money to be able to get higher and higher levels of support and you need it, I'm here for you for that too. So uh, stayed for the whole thing, Kevin. Totally appreciate that. You are here early and stayed late. You know it's a good party when you show up early and you stay late. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, thank you all. I'm gonna wrap up and I will see you next time. Have a beautiful weekend and I'll see you soon. Thanks.